Hi, and welcome to the Pauline Kitchen. And we are so excited today to bring you something spectacular for our third annual Tisch Festival. And this is a cooking workshop with the one and the only Alicia Di Donato. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to have her and I together with you. And we're going to be bringing you some really delicious dishes from Italy, actually. And we'll be explaining why we're not doing like more of a Polish Ashkenazi style of dishes that we're going to be going a little bit down south to Italy, but bringing it all the way back up to Poland and to your kitchen and your home. This uh, Tisch Festival, if you did not know about it, is the only Jewish food festival in Poland and in Warsaw, of course, uh, brought to you by Pauline Museum. And we are super excited that this year our theme is closeness. And what does closeness mean? It means pulling things together, diversity, um, finding the best in everything and pulling it together. I don't know about you, but for me, closeness, when I think about food, Jewish food in particular, and closeness, immediately the first thing that comes to my mind is the table, the tish. And Tish Festival, the one, its name uh, Tish is Yiddish for table. And that's what you do at the table. You kibbutz, you talk, you're having holidays here, you're eating, you're noshing. This is the place where life is really happening. And I don't know about you, what, what does closeness but food, mean? Yeah, food is definitely something that we have to share. Yeah. So it's, it's sharing. Yeah. And one of the reasons that we are doing Italian Jewish foods is because this year at Pauline Museum, we have a very special temporary exhibition concerning the uh, Jewish neighborhood that Pauline is located in, is the Moranov district. And the Moranov, its name actually isn't very Polish. It sounds Polish, but it's been Polishized over the years, actually. It comes from Italy <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and it comes from Venice and the actual name uh, comes from some islands in, in Venice, Murano, is that right? Murano, yeah. And uh, we're excited to be here because, like I was saying earlier, that our temporary exhibition here is Muranov. Um, it, it talks a lot about the, the life and what took place here in the layers of history that we have here in uh, this district of Warsaw, which was one of the largest Jewish populations before the war, not only in Europe, but in the world. So it's really interesting that we're going to be pulling from a little bit of Jewish Italian cuisine, but also seeing some, um, some similarities to the Ashkenazi cuisine that would have really been more so from the Maranov district. And now you also know why uh, this district is called Maranov, is because it has Italian roots. In fact, in the 17th century, yeah. there was an Italian who was hired by the Polish king yeah. to come up here and you know start building and doing things. And he built himself a beautiful palace here in this district. And he named it after Marano. It got its name Maranów, a little bit of Polishness going on. Maybe yeah, because if I am not wrong, Bellotti uh, was from Murano. Yeah. And he was this architect. He was. Was born in, in Murano, mm -hmm. right? And uh, since he was here, he moved from Murano. Uh, he was, um, he, he was a little bit nostalgic. Probably right. Probably uh, about about uh, uh, his, his home, uh, you know, his, his, his home, home of in course, Italy. <laughs> of course. And uh, here we are again with the subject of uh, closeness. Uh, yeah. Because I can imagine that to feel himself more close to to the to the to his uh, home, to mm -hmm. his land, called this Jelnica uh, in Polish. So this uh, uh, neighbor. Yes, neighborhood. A neighborhood, Murano. Exactly. Muranov. I, I Muranov. Think everybody really liked his beautiful palace because they ended up naming this district after his palace. And like this was the place to be. If you if you were Jewish and you lived here in Poland, maybe you really wanted to come and live here. 
and be here and be close to your family, your business, to walk into these streets, no, to no, hear the no, sounds, no. to buy the food. Yeah. So that's why we're doing this kind of food, this Italian food. It's kind of bring a memory back to the past, but also to bring something to our future and to bring it all together, to bring us all close. So I'm encouraging you, check out all these ingredients that we have, get yourself set up in your own kitchen and let's get started cooking with Alicia. And Alicia is gonna walk us through four delicious dishes. And what are we starting with? With a gritti. A gritti. They are called a gritti in USA. But if you are uh, not lucky or if it's winter, how to preserve them? And I will uh, tell you that I, there are many mm, different uh, uh, ways to preserve them mm -hmm. yeah, during the winter. And one of these uh, is to cook them three minutes uh, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, boiled water. Okay. Uh, and then to dry them and to put them in a jar as this one. I added uh, some oregano, mm -hmm. fresh oregano, some um, garlic and some uh, juniper. Nice. Yeah. Some juniper and uh, Covered with oil, olivas olive mm -hmm. in Polish. Uh, or olive oil. Yeah, ex olive oil. extra virgin in this case is from Abruzzo, from my grandmother. And uh, that's all. And you can preserve agretti for all the winter season, even for six months. Mm -hmm. Agretti in a jar. Nice. We will cook them for, you know, three minutes. Not so much. And you just need how many cloves of garlic? Like three? Uh, three, 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 Perfect. three. Perfect. Three is okay. So we will transfer a gritti on this pan. Okay. Throw now, a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of oil, you know. We caramelize a little bit this uh, garlic. There, you, you can put them um, to, to dry them here on a desk. Put them over to the side. Yeah. And at this point, it's very easy. We can add this agritti. And to saute them. I will add some peperoncino. Okay. Agretti are uh, full of alkali uh, substances. Mm -hmm. uh, and during the 15th century, um, they were cultivated in Murano, right in Murano. And what happened that it turned out that burning this uh, shrimp, this uh, agretti, mm -hmm. Um, they, it was possible to obtain um, very important substances to produce glass. Interesting. Yeah. And as you know, uh, in Murano, uh, it's full of uh, glasses uh, uh, farms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where glass is produced. In fact, this, uh, this, I, I bought this, uh, this plate because it's from this, one of these farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's... Um, uh, it was a very important uh, element uh, for Murano, uh, Agretti. Uh, actually, you know, Venice was huge in trading. And a lot of Jewish people, you know, were leaving different parts of Europe to come to Venice because there was a lot more freedom, especially for women. There was a lot more freedom to do trade and to do, and to do business. Yeah. Uh, so... That's really interesting that they utilize this not only for food, but they utilize this, which would end up becoming a trade product from yeah. Venice. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. But as I told you, uh, you can cook them uh, with eggs. I usually cook them with a little bit of anchois mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit and with um, tagliatelle Ooh. or uh, homemade pasta. 
Oh yeah. And, but the the procedure, uh, so the process, uh, cooking process is the same. Mm -hmm. So you can saute them and then to add them to some pasta, mm -hmm. it's uh, enough. Okay, I'm pretty excited about this because if you can tell, we're going to be doing some baking. Yep. Um, what are we making? We are making this bolo. Uh, it is called, even in, in Venetian region, bulo. Bulo. Mm -hmm. This is a Spanish, Spanish, Spanish word. Okay. Uh, the etymology is from balls. Yeah? Okay. Uh, ball. So, palla in Italian. Yeah? Because uh, this is uh, usually baked in a round shape. Ah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, usually, but maybe you can you can shape it in different in different uh, ways. And today I, I I want to make some you know loaves. Mm? Okay. Yeah. And uh, this is a dog, a fermented dog, of course. And this is made with with uh, flour. Uh, and it's sweet. It's sweet. Uh, it's for it's typical for Sukkot time. Yes. And uh, today is is also uh, Shabbat. Yes. It and is. for Shabbat dinner. Uh, but in, in this uh, African part uh, of mm -hmm. uh, Europe, as uh, for example in, uh, in Tripoli, mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. it's very popular. But in in Spain, in Spain mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. and uh, we find bolo even in Venice because yeah. there was a, 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 a population, a Sephardi population, right? Of course. And this is from Sephardi population, okay. definitely. And. Uh, uh, it is made with eggs, with uh, some oil. I, I use I use for for dog uh, dog fermented uh, fermented dog. I use uh, uh, usually oil of rice mm? because it's, it's it's more soft. Oh, okay. Uh, the dog, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, sugar, eggs, and uh, that's all. Uh, the, 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 does it remind you something? No, I think everything is great. It's funny because it sort of reminds me of something else that yeah. you would actually get here, like more Ashkenazi, yeah, exactly. like Chala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, a fermented dog yes. uh, as a Chala. Yeah. But with some differences, right? Yes, because if you are a Chala connoisseur, you know it's even pronounced differently and it tastes different in depending upon where you live. For example, yep. What does chala taste like here in Warsaw? You know what? When I when I came to to, to Poland five years ago, uh, I moved from Italy, and I was surprised about chala here in Poland because chala is definitely sweet, uh, as this uh, sweetened bread. <laughs> Did you see right? my face? Because I have the same reaction. Of course, you know, hailing from the United States, I'm not used to sweet chala. Not like it doesn't exist, uh -huh. but uh, th that was kind of an eye opener for me too. But I embraced it. I embraced this sweet. Oh. Fabulous chala here in Poland. And uh, we yeah. have to add all these ingredients together. Uh, wait, 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 wait. There's not a there's not a mixer. Where's no. the electronics? What, no, what, what can I, I do? No, no, I have to be honest. I don't want to work today with the mixers or, you know, okay. uh, electronic tools because I want to have my hands dirty and yours also, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> So usually we add sugar with flour, we can mix it. When she means a cup of sugar, she means a cup of sugar. Uh, yeah, Come more on. or less, or three quarter in this case. Okay, that's okay. That's ready to go, I think. Okay. And sugar, then we will add our oil, rice oil. Rice oil. Yep. I'm excited. Yep. Yeast and the water, and then the eggs. These are actually two whole eggs and two yolks. Okay. And we start to mix it. First with a spatula, and then we go, yep. And but then we go the to do by it. hand. Yeah, I actually, I mm -hmm. prefer this if you're gonna make a good bread or something like even challah, I prefer making it by scratch with your hands. 
This, this is the right consistency. Do you want to touch it? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's not sticky. Okay. And, uh, it's good. It's ready. Yeah. But it's not hard with either. With a machine, uh, you should uh, go for forward for five minutes. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, by hand, it's a little bit longer. And at the end, we add these raisins and uh, our orange peel. Yes. Do you want to add it? Yes, I can. Okay. Go. Okay. So like, just like this? Yeah, okay. yeah. And like, want me to sprinkle yeah, it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Get some chunks in there. Okay, get, perfect. Get the rest of that. I would say. Perfect. Okay, and then we'll add some raisins. So, this is the final effort. This is not sticky. Uh, this is very tender mm -hmm. and uh, elastic, okay? And the color is homogeneous, so it's ready. Mm -hmm. And it's ready to raise, right? All right, so we'll come back to, to this rise. in about two hours. And yeah, I think that the two hours yeah. will be, uh, it will be ready. But anyway, we will observe the final effect. Uh, it uh, should be uh, doubled. Yes. Yeah. It's time to go. It's time to go. To it's shape time. the our dough. Yes. Yeah. So we guess it because uh, uh, it's time to, 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 to shape it. We have to obtain uh, some loaves, okay? Five loaves, okay? And now we make bowls, as the name suggests, right. bolo. And we put it here and we will bake it. Can I try like making one myself? Yes, of course. So show me your You technique. have, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get it here. Know, you have to, okay. yeah, a little bit to work I'm the dough. Work this dough. Okay. And to make uh, a bowl. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. All right. It's okay. It has to raise uh, uh, for one hour, for okay. additional hour. And then we will bake it. Okay. It's weird. Uh, it's uh, weird, but this happens in uh, every country. That sometimes we eat something, some Jewish food, mm -hmm. but we are not conscious that uh, this food uh, has got Jewish roots, right? This is true. Yeah, and uh, this is the same for Bolo. In my opinion, no. Not, not everybody in Italy knows that this is from Jewish cuisine. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, here it is. Yeah, we have this bolo. Uh huh. I'm super it's already baked. And, I love uh, it. Yeah, me too. And uh, it's got this consistency. It's very soft and. Uh, um, it's perfect. It's the perfect bread for the perfect day. I mean, Absolutely. Th today is Shabbat, mm -hmm. so we can taste it af after our dinner, right? A absolutely. Oh, okay. What do we get to make now? Now, uh, bread, uh, the, the, these are um, dumplings made with the breadcrumbs. It's a Venetian uh, typical uh, meal, but and it's from the Ashkenazian tradition. Okay. Yeah. It's very, very simple. Uh, we are always talking about the Jewish uh, cucina povera. Uh, so it's uh, made with uh, breadcrumbs, so not to waste, you know, bread. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we got our breadcrumbs here. Yeah. Traditional breadcrumbs. Yeah, so uh, milk. Uh, I use uh, to add some fat inside. Mm -hmm. I use Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm -hmm. And it's our eggs and uh, salt and uh, a little bit of um, uh, pepper, black pepper. Simple. And that's all. And then we are going to make by hand these dumplings. So I'm let's go. Dumplings? And it's very easy. I'm super excited. Yep, yeah, you have now. We're making dumplings. We're gonna need some help. Yeah. Can I call my friend Zosha? Of course. Wait, wait. Go, 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 go. Because you know. But you, that's Zosha. You, you, you know we need help, and she's like knows what she's doing. But that that's Zosha. She has okay. she has the ability to help us. Okay. Okay. Cool. Hey, Zosha. 
We need you in the polling kitchen. Yeah, come. You have to work. Did you Joshua. hear that? The chef is calling you. Come on over. Do, come do, on over. Don't think even for a second that you were making dumplings. There. We need your help. Come. Come to us. Okay, she's coming. Okay, perfect. In the meantime, we will mix all these ingredients. Okay. Okay. And uh, <gasps> hey. she's passing by, so yeah, exactly. yes, of course, exactly. exactly. I'm here. And I can help. I'm Polish. Okay. So I should know how to make dumplings. Of that's course. Why, that's why I called her because she knows what she's doing. She's had training. But do you make pierogi? No, actually no. Mm -hmm. But you know, I probably have these things in my genes because of okay. my origins. Okay. Yeah. I'm partly Jewish, so I think we can. Uh huh. Okay. You cool. have the training. Trust me. I have me. my training. Yes. Okay. You're, you're Bob Chen. I'm telling you. <laughs> yes. My yes. My grandmother told me stay focused on the kitchen and you know I yeah. need it. So probably this is a, a revenge. Yeah. Yes. Or we will make your grandmother very happy and proud of oh, you today. Yes. Right? Let's, see, let's check. Or, or okay. hello, if you like making matzo ball soup, and you know what I'm talking about, when you get that matzo and you're making some lovely dish or cool. Yeah. So that's really, this is going to be so much fun to make. If you've got little ones, I recommend this is a great task for them to learn how to make these and be close as a family. It's a family affair. Yeah. That's why we needed Zosha. Yeah, because, you know, it's I, a family affair. Yeah, need help. This is the typical gnocchi because they are they are uh, called in Italy uh, gnocchi di pangrattato. Hmm? So pangrattato breadcrumbs you know, in English. And uh, as I as I said, uh, they are very simple to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, as uh, happens always for homemade pasta or homemade gnocchi, uh, all the family uh, mm -hmm. take part of this event. Aww. So, since we are a family, let's go together. Okay. Let's do it. These are called the kugoli in Venetian, in, uh, in, uh, in Venice. Okay. Kugoli. And the etymology, uh, it, the etymology of this uh, word is, uh, of course, kugel. Kugel. Yeah? Okay, so this is yeah. the first very, yeah. or very first bowl. <laughs> okay, but. That's perfect. Okay, yeah. I, hope I, can, I hope I can measure up to this. But okay. they will be perfect. Your okay. salt. So, so take a piece of bread, crumbs of dough, and mix this bowl. Okay. Are yeah. you ready, Zosha? I should be ready. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make our Bob just proud. And uh, these uh, these uh, kugoli um, are uh, very famous, not just in the Venetian region, because uh, they are made uh, also with uh, stock. With and you can make it. Um, mm. With the beef stock, hmm? beef instead, stock. Of, yeah, nice. as a substitute of uh, mm, of um, of milk. Oh, oh yeah, perfect. I perfection, perfect. perfection. Just canali, as we say in Polish. Right. Oh, right. let's go for the tomato sauce. Right? Yes, that is very very simple. And uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, it's important to add some you know taste, some uh, mm -hmm. some flavor. Uh, you can uh, also, um, these uh, dumplings, these gnocchi, uh, taste them with uh, some stock, mm -hmm. vegetable stock, mm -hmm. meat stock, and uh, duck stock, stock, for example. Uh, but uh, I prefer to give them some uh, sauce, uh, tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have made our lovely balls, and thanks to Zosha for coming in and helping us. And now we're going to be making this sauce. Yeah. Right. So, kind of tell us about this sauce. This is very process. very simple. I grat, I am grating the um, tomatoes. Um, these are uh, local tomatoes, and this is the last uh, part of the season for tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that uh, it's good to use this uh, final part to. Uh, yeah, to 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 to, to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. So I want to grab them, right, and uh, then I will cook them uh, for 10, 20 minutes just to, you know, to mix them to our onion and our garlic with a little bit of, of oil of oil, and uh, and that's all. And we will add this uh, sauce to this kugoli. We are going to cook our gnocchi di pangrattato and uh, I will uh, 
then I will dress them with uh, some sauce, nice. tomato sauce. Yeah. And how long does it take usually to cook these? Uh, it, it depends um, on uh, the breadcrumbs. This is uh, uh, this is pretty pretty uh, interesting okay. because sometimes uh, this dog is a little bit tender. Sometimes um, it, it depends of the, on the breadcrumbs. On the breadcrumbs. So, um, okay. But when they go uh, up, mm -hmm. in general, uh, it means that they are ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So our gnocchi di pangrattato are ready, and wow. we will move them to this uh, tomato sauce. They are fantastic. Yes. Yeah, the taste is very, very good. And uh, if you think that uh, there are only four ingredients, basically, uh, but the main, the, the main ingredient here is breadcrumbs, and this is uh, exceptional. I would like to, to add some uh, parsley. Oh. Yeah, we, we have um, flowers, flowers, seasonal flowers. But they're all edible, which is wonderful. Edible, <laughs> edible, yeah. yeah. It's my favorite kind of flowers. <laughs> With this beautiful color also. Two ingredients and you can do a lot of things, tasty things. No waste. Okay, girls, so I have to go back to my desk. Uh, okay. But, you know, this beautiful meal no. will go with me. I I think, I'm sorry. I think okay. it's great. The plate and, and everything is for you, obviously. So enjoy. Thank you so much. Sure. Say hello to all the colleagues in Poland. Then. Of course. Okay. I will say hello and stay Joy. tuned. And thank, thank you so much. No, we thank you for taking time off today to come and be a part of this and for all that you're doing to make Tish great. And uh, smudge nego. <laughs> Enjoy it. Bye. 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 Okay, and unfortunately, this is going to be our final dish of the day. Yeah. What are we making? We are going to make a zucca de spada. Yeah, the, the spada is the Venetian name for um pumpkin the, the fitted pumpkin okay Ooh. but the fitted in which sense that is uh, smashed mm -hmm. defeated defeated yeah pumpkin smashed yeah. zero chef one it's very simple super vegetarian of course you guys probably associate more pumpkin with like pumpkin pie but let's go ahead and take this to the next level we're going to smash up this pumpkin where actually it's already pre-smashed for us and our chef is going to show us how to make something really fabulous for fall and fall holidays that are coming up. Yeah, what, uh, what, I, what I did, uh, I baked, I roasted uh, in the oven, uh, 200 degrees, this um, uh, pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a zucca de spada, is typically made with uh, a kind of variety of a pumpkin called uh, barucca. Barucca. Yeah. From the etymology is from the Hebrew Baruch. Okay. Holy. Okay. Santo. Yeah. And because this was a typical, typical dish mm -hmm. to break the fast after Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yeah. Oh. And Yom Kippur, for those of you who may or may not know, is one of the most important Jewish holidays in the Jewish calendar. It is the Day of Atonement, and it's time for fasting, and it's a time of prayer. And so obviously, if you've been fasting, you need something more gentle yes. on your stomach. And like, again... This is a time of holidays that we come together. We're doing this as a community. We're all coming to each other's homes and we're eating and we're reflecting and it's a really wonderful time of the year actually. And not everybody celebrates Yom Kippur, right? Because we have some people that they're not so religious and that's perfectly cool. Um, but I would say for most uh, Jewish people, Yom Kippur is probably one of the most important holidays besides Hanukkah and Passover. Yeah. So, so this is perfect, not to stress the stomach. Absolutely. And suddenly, and uh, to use, again, seasonal products. Yeah. Yeah, because now in Poland is full of pumpkins. 
And there are a lot of varieties. What pumpkin do you really recommend? Or do for this preparation, yes, for uh, this one. pumpkins uh, that not contains uh, a lot of water. Ah, okay. 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 For example, this zucca baruca, this one. Well, it, this is wonderful. It the is color so is is wonderful, and you know, inside has this. Uh, it's not so yellow. It's a little bit, uh, you know, green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not tender. It it has not so many. Uh, doesn't contain a lot of water. Water, exactly. Yeah, we, because we don't need water for mm -hmm. this kind of preparation. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, you can find this variety. In, I think so, absolutely. In uh, in, uh, in USA, uh, or sure, like at your yeah. local farmers market or yeah. whatever. Also, I have a question. You did talk about that how you baked. Yeah. This um, did you happen to put like mm, any salt or pepper or just like totally no? Natural? I added. I added no. In the oven, it's uh, uh, it's very simple because you have to cut it mm -hmm. and to put in the oven. Okay. Just anything. You Look. don't have to add anything. Nice. Okay. When uh, it is uh, um, well caramel caramelized, mm -hmm. you, you can uh, smash it and then. In that moment, uh, to give a little bit of, to add a little bit of salt okay. and uh, black pepper or rosemary, okay? Ooh, uh, nice. What you what you want? Okay, sounds great. Yeah, it's a side dish. It's typically it's a side dish, and actually we can use this to make to add this to the dog challa challa dog. Oh my goodness, that's right because you can make pumpkin challa. For yeah. those of you who uh, love pumpkin everything during fall time, have you tried pumpkin chala yet? And I would recommend, if you like sweets, you can make it sweet, like we have sweet version of chala in Poland, or you can make it more savory and just have something a little bit more special at the table with some of these uh, different uh, uh, things that we're baking. Yeah. And um, this kind of pumpkin, uh, it's good for chala, as we said. And this is uh, a typical moment for pumpkin chala because it's sukkot, right? Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, and, and why it's typical? Because of the seasonal, it's a seasonal pro Absolutely. product. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Th this, this is, this is uh, why it's very, it's typical of this moment. Yeah. So I, I am frying uh, uh, this uh, onion with uh, uh, oil, mm -hmm. oil, extra virgin oil. And now I smashed the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And now we are adding this pumpkin to this uh, onion. And uh, we will cook this pumpkin for 10 minutes. Okay. No, no more. All right. For all you people out there who love bagels as much or more than I do, your bagel world is about ready to explode, I'm telling you. What are we doing with this bagel today? Okay, this bagel, we do something like this, that we add some pumpkin, okay. yeah, this fada, zucca this fada. Mm -hmm. We will uh, make, uh, we will cut some chips. It's chips? No. Childs. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Uh, erba cipollina in Italian. Yeah? Yeah, how do you say that in Italian? Erba cipollina. Oh my yeah. goodness. And we have uh, also some flowers from cheese. Flowers? Edible yeah. flowers? Edible flowers. I've, right. I've, okay. I've never put this on a bagel before, but I'm really curious to see how it's going to taste. Uh, a little bit of oil of oil. Oh yeah, uh -huh. a little bit of our agritti. Agritti right? is back. Yeah, they are back. Because we don't waste anything in this kitchen, right? This is true. Okay, but what about the rest? We eat it, right? We eat it everything. I think we might we might have taken care of that. <laughs> let, no, no, let no good thing go to waste. Let's use it, everything. Let's use it all. Okay, a little bit of salt. And now we have, we could add some chives. Chives. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, it would be tasty. You you better book I your ticket suppose. to Warsaw as soon as you can and come cook with uh, and completely Chef Alicia. I'm telling you, your bagel game just got re redone. Let me tell you. And, and some flowers, flowers, edible flowers. Yeah. It's so pretty, but you know what? You, oh my gosh, yeah, it, it smells. smells pretty too. Let me yeah. tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, well, we, we have, have a version of a suka de spada with the bagels. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's tasty, and uh, it's a good. Uh, you, you you can eat it for lunch, for a snack. Or for breakfast. Or any time you or, want. <laughs> yeah, or actually now. Actually so now. So we're going to eat it, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. All right, we thank you so much for joining us for the third annual Tish Festival that we've had so far. More days to come with great foodie experiences online. And we at Pauline would love to thank our dear friend, Alicia, for thank coming. You for, thank you for inviting me. It was such a pleasure to have you. And I am honored to take part of this uh, third edition of Tish Festival. Yeah. Really. And I hope that you learned a lot about Marano and Marano, and you know the differences, but you also know the similarities that brings us together yeah. Yeah. and brings us close and learned a little bit about uh, Jewish history here in Warsaw that you could take home with you. And of course, learn some amazing dishes. We would love to hear from you, find out which one of these that we did today is your favorite. I can tell you right now that I have some new favorites, not just one, after you know testing these and eating these, <laughs> that I hope that you can use some of these for your holidays yeah. um, or any days, really. Don't forget to continue to follow us on Friends of Pauline on Facebook. And of course, you can get more information about the Tisch Festival by visiting our website. And we look forward to seeing you in Warsaw someday soon so that you can come and cook along with Alicia here in Warsaw. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.